Hello guys, now we're going to talk about uh, two interesting subjects that are very closely related to inheritance. Uh, the subjects are method of arriving and abstract classes. Don't worry if these sound very um, difficult, if these names sound um, overly technical. The idea behind them are, are quite simple actually. Uh, you'll see it uh, as, we, as we go through them. So let's review what we've done so far. So far, we have created this uh, very simple account class, which is basically just the thing that has a balance. It has uh, gather and set up methods to change the balance, and also a deposit and withdraw method, and uh, a transfer method that allows us to move a sum of money from this account to a target account. And we also have this Chimera account class, which we've seen uh, we are built extending the already existing account class, so it inherits everything that's inside the camera account. And beyond that, it has uh, a private double of show bonus, a special bonus that this uh, bank account gets. And uh, it has a method, uh, an extra method that's called apply of show bonus that modifies the balance of this account. So this is all very simple and ideal, but let's say that uh, we are not actually okay with inheriting everything that's declared in the account class. Let's say, for example, that uh, inside, that actually we are okay with inheriting the withdraw method from the account class, but we have a problem, and the problem is that the Chimera account doesn't execute the deposit method as simply as it is now defined in the account class. Let's say that uh, the Chimera account needs to apply that of show bonus whenever we deposit. Uh, so what do we do? Because right now, if we create a Chimera account and execute the deposit method, of course, we are executing the method that we are inheriting from the account class. So what, should, what can we do? Can we say in some way that we want to inherit the old method uh, with the exception of, of, of a special one? Or whatever else can we do for, uh, uh, to allow, that allows us to have our own uh, uh, deposit uh, method inside the camera account class? Well, the solution is pretty simple. Actually, it turns out that uh, we can just uh, declare another deposit method inside uh, the Chimera account class. And this method will take the place of the method that we are inheriting. So let's do just that. Let me copy the method to make sure that I don't make any mistakes in writing it. So it will be public void deposit, double amount. And inside here now, I can do whatever I want to change uh, the behavior of this method. For example, what I could do would be, uh, let's say that we actually want to apply your show bonus whenever we make a deposit. So just for the sake of the argument. So we want to insert a call to apply your show bonus. And now that we have redefined this method, we can say that we have made an override of the original method that we were inheriting from the base class. But now, let's try to understand better the meaning of this method overriding. To explore it, we want to insert an output here so that uh, we can easily see when this method is being called. So let's say command uh, deposit called. There we go. And let's do the same for the regular method that we were inheriting. So let's go to deposit and see instead just a regular account deposit called. Perfect. And now let's go back to the main method and let's ask ourselves a couple of questions. Like for example, what happens if I if I create an account and then I call deposit on it? Well of course this is a pretty clear situation because uh, the reference is of class account, the object associated with it is of class account. So I'm pretty sure that every one of you will guess that uh, the method that will be called will be the deposit that's inside the class account. And that's pretty obvious. If we have instead a Chimera account object created this way, where the reference is of 
a type cover account and the object is a type cover account what happens if you call the deposit of this reference well even here now that we have redefined the meter deposit and we check that the compiler is happy with it, then it's pretty uh, reasonable to expect that the method that will be called will be the deposit method of the Kaiman account class. I'm talking about this one. Perfect. But one of the consequences of having the Kaiman account inherit from the account class is that we can create uh, a reference of class account let's call a1 and initialize it with the address of an object which is not an stream which is not an account but it's actually a kind of account now look very attentively at this line because it looks very simple it looks innocuous but inside this line it's represented the full power of object-oriented programming and in particular what you've seen here is the possibility of polymorphism, the third and the most important pillar of object-oriented programming. But we'll go in much uh, more depth into this subject in our next video. For now, all that we need to know about it is that a child class can be assigned to a reference of its uh, superclass. So if Kyron account extends account, it is legal, it is possible, to have a reference of class account that points to an object that is of class Kyron account. And later we see that it's not only legal, it's not only possible, but it's also very, very useful. But my question is, uh, what happens now if we take the reference A1 and we invoke the method deposit on it? Now the situation is less uh, clear than before because the reference is of class account and the object is of class Kaiman account and these two classes have different deposit method. So which one does get called here? Well, we could ask ourselves, which one would we want to be called? If you think about it, then you probably, uh, then you probably will, would answer the one in the Kaiman account class because it's intuitively uh, obvious that what really matters is what kind of object will answer the call to this, uh, to this invocation. And this is, in fact, what's actually happening here. Uh, let's prove it by executing this program and check that what I said is true. Let's save our resources. And you see right here that the last step the last deposit that was done was a Kaiman deposit. The other two are relative to this call, and of course, this other call. So, the important thing here is to remember here is that when a child class redefines a method, that method gets called not only when the reference on which it is called is of the child class type, but, but also when the, when the method is being called on a reference of the superclass, of the mother class. And this is not as trivial as it could sound, because what it means is that Java does runtime binding on, uh, on a call to this method, because at compile time, it's actually not really possible to know uh, what kind of object uh, Will, will answer this call uh, at runtime. Uh, it might not be obvious at first sight, but uh, let's try to make it a little bit more obvious for you. For example, I could do this. Let's say, for example, that I create uh, a random ob a ran an object of class random. Random ray, oh, let me just make control space to import the class. Uh, rand equals new random. And then let me generate uh, a random number, a random integer, thanks to this class. Tax equals red dot text int. And well, let's say this number can be even or odd. So let's make a condition to do different things if x is even or odd. So I say if uh, x modulus uh, 2, if this is different from 0, then obviously this, the x integer is odd and else uh, we'll do something else 
And what actually we, we want to do is this. First, declare the account uh, variable. And actually, let's just leave it as this, not initialized, because after we say if x is, a, is an odd number, then a1 will be equal to a kind of account. Otherwise, it will be equal to a regular account. So we say a1 equals new account. And of course, we have to give it an initial balance. There we go. So now you tell me, how can a compiler know which object uh, will uh, answer this call at runtime? Because of course, uh, it could be a kind of account or it could be an account depending on the value of x, but the value of x will be known only at runtime. So of course the compiler know nothing about it. That means that the decision about which method will be called is a decision that will be made at runtime. So, remember this, method overriding is a process that happens at runtime, not at compile time. We'll talk more about method overriding in our next video on the third pillar of object-oriented programming, polymorphism. Now, I want to spend a few minutes talking about another idea that presents itself when you start to make uh, inheritance hierarchies, like we are doing here with our account and kind of account class. Let's try to make this example just a little bit more realistic. And let's just, let's ask ourselves, well, okay, a chimera account is a very precise entity. It is a class that I used to make all my dirty offshore dealings. But what about the class account? Class account is a little bit, uh, a little bit too anonymous, a little bit too general. Uh, what is a general account? Actually, after the investigation, it turns out that our bank actually, that our bank, actually after a little bit more investigation, it turns out that our bank wants to use right now two kinds of account, the Chimera account and the Italian account. There's no such thing as a general account. So what we could do? Well, of course, we could change the name, refactor our code, change the name of this class and call it Italian account. But then we would uh, run into another problem, which is, uh, is it uh, a good idea that uh, Chimera account extends an Italian account? Uh, of course not. A Chimera account is not an Italian account. So how do we get out of this? Well, uh, we make another class, I guess. So uh, let's make another class that we call the Italian account. account and of course we cannot add spaces in our class means and of course we want it to be an account as well so we want it to extend the account class as well and of course the keyword is extends account and why is the compiler complaining you know that from previous videos because we have a problem with the constructor chaining uh, but we can solve it that manually or just be smart and let Eclipse help us. And yes, we want uh, a constructor that takes an initial balance and that will call the constructor of our superclass account, passing to it our initial balance. There we go. So now the class compiles and as we know, it in everything, it in every, it's in everything, everything from the account class. And let's say that actually in this Italian account, also we want to change the way that we make deposits. Uh, we don't want to inherit the, we don't want to inherit the method uh, that's defined in the general account class. And just for the sake of the argument, let's say that since we Italians love to pay a lot of taxes to support our corrupt uh, politicians and managers, uh, we'll, we will have to pay a tax to on every deposit we make. So let's do what we did in the Chimera card class, which is redefine, make a method override of the, of the regular deposit method. And here we say Italian account, deposit code, of course. And here 
let's say just to keep things very simple that uh, we'll we'll take away one unit from every deposit that we made you know we make uh, lots of deposits so our corrupt politicians can be can can sleep uh, peacefully um, so now actually uh, I'll take also the chance to discuss another little things that are related to method overriding which is you'll often see uh, that when you make a, a method override you will see that it's it also goes hand in hand with this override annotation what is the meaning of this well an annotation is something that's uh, it's kind of a comment to our code, but it's a special comment because it's a comment that the compiler is aware of. And also there are annotations that gets compiled into the code. So there are annotations that are, that are also known to the virtual machine. So there are basically two kinds of annotation, compile time annotation and runtime annotation. At override is a compile time annotation. It, there's no trace of it inside that bytecode. There will be there will be no trace of this annotation inside a bytecode. And the reason is that once the code is compiled, there's, there's no use for this annotation. So what, what actually is the use of this annotation? Well, first of all, it's documentation, because when I see this class, I can see immediately that this method is the override, the redefinition of a method that was defined in one of the uh, superclass of this class. But the second and most important reason is there is also an, a, net, a safety net against the uh, silly mistakes that I could do. Uh, what kind of silly mistakes? Well, for example, I could write the deposit method with a capital D, and now this is not an override of any method, and, but the compiler can uh, see that there's something wrong, something fishy here, because uh, it says, well, from here you're telling that this is a method override. But now, the name of the method is actually different from the method that you're trying to override. So this is um, another method. I don't care that the only difference is just the capital letter or not. It's not a method. It's not an override. And if I didn't have this annotation, I would have happily gone along and thought I, was, I had just done an override while I didn't. So having this annotation in place, uh, is a good safety net that uh, helps me not to, to make silly mistakes like this. So now we have our brand new deposit method for the Italian account, and all is nice. Well, almost uh, all, because now what about this method inside the account class? It's, it doesn't really get inherited from the other, from the Italian account, from the Chimera account classes, because both of them have redefined it. So why is it sitting here? Uh, the, so why is it? It doesn't get really inherited. Both the Italian account and the Chimera account classes redefine this deposit method. Here is for the Chimera. Here's for the Italian account. So now the question is, why is this method sitting here if it's not useful uh, in the, any of our classes? And also, there's another question, and the question is, uh, well, uh, let me just take away this code as well, which is, not, which is basically that good. And the question is, if we don't want general account classes floating around in our application, what guarantees us that they cannot be created? Because right now they can, uh, by mistake, uh, somebody can definitely create an account. Here we go. For example, here, but we just said that in our application, we want only Italian or, uh, we just want Italian or Chimera account. But there's nothing that, uh, there's nothing that uh, takes away the possibility for a mistake here. So, so we basically have two problems. First, we don't want to have uh, account class, account object inside an application, but now uh, we could have them. And second, we have no need for this deposit method anymore in the super class. 
Well, one thing that you could try would be, uh, well, let's just take this away. Let's just uh, delete or comment out the deposit method and because it doesn't make any sense to have uh, a deposit method inside this account class anymore. But that's not a very smart or very useful solution. Why? Uh, we see it right here if you go back to our, to our main class. Because now the compiler is very unhappy about us calling deposit on this reference A because the reference A is of class account. The object is of class Italian account and it does have a method deposit, but the compiler doesn't give a damn about it. As we've seen before, the compiler doesn't know which object will uh, answer this call at runtime. All it knows is that you're making a call on the reference of the class that's of kind account. And if the class account does not have a method deposit, the compiler will not let you make this invocation. So we do have to have the deposit method on the account class. You could object, well, I'll just make all the reference of the child class, so I'll make this a reference to Italian account, but wait, what about here? What about this case? <laughs> what kind would you give to this reference? Chimer account or Italian account? You don't know because you don't know which one of these lines will be executed at that time. And again, I'll talk about more later about why it's so useful to keep the reference general, to keep them on the level of the base class instead of the actual class of the object. But for now, let's take it as a, as a good practice that I explain later. Just trust me and uh, believe that it's useful. And so let's go back to our problem. We cannot take the deposit method away from our current class. So let's put it back by putting control slash, and there we go, the method is back. But this implement it because actually the declaration of the method is useful. It's useful, we just see why, because it allows us to call the deposit method of reference of the current account. What's, what's useless is the, this implementation. So can we take this away? Yes, we can. And to take this away, the syntax is to put a, a semicolon instead of the body of the method. And, but at this point, this method must be declared as an abstract method to signal the compiler that we know that this method is not defined it's not that we just forgot the uh, body of the method by mistake. But now that this class has, uh, has an abstract method, the class itself must be declared abstract. So we also have to put this uh, abstract modifier in the declaration of the class, again, to signal that this class is a class that contains one or more abstract method. What are the consequences of what we just done? Well, the consequence is that if you go back to our main method and we try to make what we have decided is a mistake, that is the creation, that the instantiation of the of an account class, we find out that we cannot do this anymore. We cannot instantiate the object of class account, not because this constructor doesn't exist. This constructor which takes the initial balance, does exist, but since the class is abstract, we cannot create object of an abstract class. So, rule to remember, when a class is abstract, you cannot inst directly instantiate object of that class. No direct invocation to the constructor are possible. So, this is actually uh, a feature for us, because we didn't want to have this, the possibility to create a current class. So let's go back to the instantiation of the Italian account class. And I stress that we cannot make a direct invocation to this uh, constructor because other invocation to this constructor will be possible. What do I mean? Well, of course, I mean this kind of invocation. The invocation that the child class will make in its constructor to initialize its superclass part. That, of course, is still possible. Why? Well, because an abstract class meaning is just to serve as a base class to be inherited from. It's not to create objects from it. 
So now let's go back to main, let's correct this mistake, and let's say that here we want to instantiate an Italian account. So in this video, we have discussed two very important concepts, which are of method overriding, which means that the child class not only inherits variable and methods from the superclass, but if he wants, it can redefine the, uh, a method that he has inherited from the superclass and change it to, to its own content. Let me add the override annotation even here, since it's such a, such a good practice. And the second uh, feature of the language that we have discussed is the possibility of creating what are called abstract classes. Abstract classes are classes that are useful as a base from which to inherit, just like our account class is useful, so that we can create the Italian account and the Chimera account class that inherit from the same account class. And we have seen that an abstract class is a class that has one or more Astra method, which are declaration of methods with lack a definition of what the method actually does. And it's actually not a problem that we don't have uh, an implementation because we are seeing that once a class is abstract, it cannot be instantiated. We cannot create object of class account. So we cannot invoke the meta deposit on object of class account because no object of class account can exist. But having abstract classes is very, very useful because, as we will discuss in our next video, having a, a common basis between, between uh, different classes like Italian account and Chimera account, uh, it's uh, a very, very good thing to have. And it's actually what's called polymorphism. And we'll discuss the importance of it in our next video.